Hey, good morning, guys. It's Bob True. So, um, <clears throat> taking a walk. I'll do a screen. I'll do a screenshot later on. But um, for right now, I just want to um, cover some stuff in the Bible. Good morning. Uh, good morning. So, one of the things I want to talk about was uh, the fact that you know how you have people who say they keep the law. You know, which is ridiculous, right? Because nobody, no one keeps the law, right? No one keeps the law. Um, it talks about. By the law shall no flesh be justified in the sight. But you have people who say things like, well, you know, I, I keep the law, you know. And uh, we got to keep the law. Uh, and then you're like, well, didn't Jesus die for our sins under the law? Right? Wasn't that the whole point and purpose? Without, rem without remission of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. And so he said he nailed the ordinances, the transgression that were held against us to the cross, taking them out of the way, right? And he's basically saying like, you, but you have to, you have to believe the gospel when you believe the gospel <clears throat> you're born again but regardless of whether you believe the gospel or not jesus did die for our sins he died for every 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 person the mediator between god and man he died for every every single one of us right and so you can't really deny that let me go this way i'm going the opposite way go this way I don't have much time. so you can't really deny that jesus died for um, all men and that's because all the sin to come short of the glory of God so if Jesus didn't die for all men then all men would still have to try to keep the law to be saved but the problem is if you offend one part of the law you offend all parts of the law and once you offend the law you're corrupt and once you're corrupt you can't uncorrupt yourself Right. This is what the Bible's talking about. So when the Bible talks about, you know, a whore and harlot and all this kind of stuff, it's basically like saying, let me put, let's do this. It's like saying, imagine you're supposed to be married, and when you're supposed to be married, you're supposed to be a virgin. Upon your, you know, a virgin the person, the man expects his wife to be a virgin. The uh, wife expects the husband to be a virgin. So you're supposed to be a virgin. You know, you're not supposed to be with anyone else. And so um, the Bible is looking at it like if you sin just once, you're no longer a virgin. You're not pure. You didn't come to that wedding pure. So when the Bible talks about that, when the Bible talks about people who are um, offending the law, and it's talking about that law being a schoolmaster, the way that it's using the law is as a schoolmaster. It says, uh, it says the law is a schoolmaster that leads us unto Christ, and once we come to faith, we're no longer under schoolmaster. So when it talks about the law, it's saying the law is basically not for a righteous man. And so you gotta understand that under the analogy of breaking the law just once, you're considered no longer a virgin. And it says if you offend one part of the law, you offended all parts of the law. Here's what people are saying. It's like saying, well, I went on a date with Billy or Sherry or whatever. And uh, we only went to first base, right? That's what they're saying. <laughs> this is the equivalent of what they're saying. And God is saying, no, 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 no. You did not go to just first base. Because if you offend one part of the law, you offended all parts of the law. You not only went to firm first base, he hit a home run. He went around the plate. He, he, he drove it home. And uh, he scored. That's what, that's what the Bible's saying. That's, that's the analogy. It's saying, don't give me this, well, I'm still, you know, we only, Tommy and I, Billy and I, Sherry and I, we only did so much. She's like, no, 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 no. You're no longer a virgin. You're no longer pure. Now, everybody who claims that they, oh, you know, uh, so either, so based on that, you're to be put to death because you, 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 you presented yourself for something you're not, you offended one law, offended all parts of the law, you're trying, you're a hypocrite, you're claiming that you're a virgin, you're not, you know, uh, you're trying to minimize what you've done, right? And you're just not, you're not coming and saying, hey, look, 
I'm a sinner. Right? But because you want what you want, you lie. You lie to the person about who you are. You don't tell them the truth about who you are. So you come defiled, right? And you put on a white dress, which represents what? Purity and righteousness. It's not racial, guys. You need to get that out of your mind. So you put on that white dress, which represents being without blemish, without spot, without wrinkle, you know, purity, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you come pretending you're a virgin, and but you're not. And you're presenting your man and presenting yourself to your husband or to your spouse or to your wife or whatever as being this pure partner. But you're not. Like I said, if you offended one part, you offended all. You're saying, well, Tommy or Sherry, whatever, we only went to first base. And they're like, no, <laughs> don't give me this. We only went to first base stuff. You did much, much, much more than that. And so I want to read this to you really uh, quickly. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless. Think about it. Anytime you hear anybody claiming, I don't care what their religious affiliation is. It's just names, guys. And this is why you got to be born again. And you're going to understand we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So when you have the people who are bringing the woman who was caught in adultery. And they're like, look, she's caught in the very act. And they don't understand what <laughs> they don't understand what Jesus is saying. When it says, let he that is without sin. Oh, you guys weren't caught in the very act. But let me tell you what the Bible says. All the sin to come short of the glory of God. And you offend one part of law, you offend all parts of law. So you're a hypocrite to bring her out and say, you know, I've heard people try to tell the story a different way. You're a hypocrite to bring her out if you don't understand the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God is perfection. And you can't do that. You have not done that. In fact, your parents haven't done that. And because your parents have corrupted themselves, they've corrupted their seed and their lineage all the way through. All men, all flesh is corrupt. All flesh will perish and go back to the dust. Hence, you got to be born again. Not of the flesh, but of the spirit. And the spirit doesn't have flesh and bones and the children of the flesh. These are not children of God. I will repeat this. So that's why Christ died for our sins. He was buried, he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. He says, you're understanding that it, the law required that death because it is just that if you sin, you're supposed to be put to death. And so he's saying, look, because you need time to believe the truth, he's saying that he died for our sins so that for those who believe, then they, they get something that's given to them for free. And that's the spirit. That's eternal life. And that's, they're born again, a new creature created in Christ from heaven, not from a physical, quote unquote, carnal mom and a carnal dad who is corrupt enough, corrupt seed. That's why it says the children of the flesh aren't children of God. It's not a very hard verse. It's called the father of spirits and spirits don't have flesh and bones. It's not a very hard verse. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. This world is corrupt and sits in darkness and light had no community dark. Not a hard verse. I'm going to keep repeating these verses because people are going to, oh, you're just talking about the basics. No, I'm not talking about the basics because you believe in the Trinity. You believe God is flesh. Not that God comes in the likeness of sinful flesh. Well, wait a minute. God comes in the likeness of God. Is, is God working in me? Is God working in another person? God's working in all the people who are no longer children of the flesh, people who are, who've been born again. So we're no longer affiliated with our flesh. Like Paul said, if I do the things that I would not, it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me, that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. But where is my spirit man? My spirit man is hid in Christ, being found in him, having not my own righteousness. So we have the righteousness of God. It's an imputed righteousness. And because we're in God, who can lay charge to God? God's elect. It's God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? Because there's no condemnation of them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So those who are claiming that they kept the law or keeping the law and they got to, well, I only broke it once, but now I'm going to repent from it. You're, you got, you're, you repent by, by doing what? By keeping the law? You can, that's these people who say, oh, I'm a new, I done went, Tommy and I did everything under the sun. Not suitable for, for, for TV, we done did everything that you can do. And that's how God sees it, by the way. Even if you like, I just went to first base. You, we done did everything there is to do. But what's, they gonna, what's gonna be their claim? But hey, you know, I'm, 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 a, I'm a virgin again. 
tomorrow I'm going to be a virgin again. No, no, no. You got to be a new creature. And the way that you're protected from being a sinner is being your life being hid in God. Colossians 3.3. 3. So that's how the Bible's explaining it. And that's what the Bible means by it, guys. So a lot of these people who are trying to say, oh, they're keeping the law, then they got to understand, look, that law is a schoolmaster. If you look at that law and you talk about you're keeping that law, you must not understand the law. You must not understand the righteousness of God. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to diminish God's righteousness, lower the bar, so to speak, so that you can, can, can claim you're keeping it. And so that's why they say, well, you know, we have to keep so many laws, but you so-called Gentiles, which a Gentile, by the way, is an unbeliever, heathen. So they've even perverted that, of course. But the reason why they say, well, we got to keep more laws and you guys only have to keep these so-called Noahide laws is because the reason they're doing that is because they're trying to compare themselves to other men. That's exactly what they're doing. They're trying to say, well, look, this person was caught in the very act. You know, the woman caught in adultery in the very act. And then Jesus is saying to them, let he that is among you without, who is without sin cast the first stone, all of sin to come short of the glory of God. So if you say you don't have, have no sin, you're a liar and the truth's not in you, right? So that's what it's saying. And it's, it's being very clear about, you know, what it, what it means. So look, the law, listen, do you need the, if you're, if you're a righteous person, do you, do you need the law? Is God under the law? No. Look, this is why if your life is hid in God, you have the righteousness being found in him having natural right. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man but for the lawless and disobedient. So when you hear your pastor or anyone bragging or trying to condemn you in the flesh, you say, yeah, my flesh, in my flesh dwells no good thing. My flesh definitely needs a law because my flesh is a sinner. But thank goodness I'm no longer a child of the flesh and my life is hidden in God. So I'm not telling people to go and do stuff, but I'm telling you, your flesh is, is, is filthy rags. It's a whore, a harlot. And that's why it's gonna go back to the dust. So the only reason you do stuff in this, in this so-called land, even though it has unjust scales, is because you know that you're gonna end up, that these guys who think they're keeping the law, these judges, these unjust judges, they're gonna penalize you. And it's only because we are, are beast to each other. Because we're unfair and unjust, we need the law. That's why we need the law. That's why children of the flesh need the law, because they're unjust to each other. It's for their own good. Just like when you have a child, it's for their own good. It's because the children of the flesh are unjust. That's why they need, that's why we need the law as children of the flesh, right? That's why. But does the law make you just? No, the law just exposes that you're unjust. And that's why the laws are multiplied. It's like, wow, you just had to keep making more and more laws. Why? why? Everyone's so just, why do you need all these laws? There's, there's no thieves. I don't even know what thievery is, Lord. What are you talking about? Stealing? I don't know what stealing is, Lord. I don't covet anything, Lord. What are you talking about? I don't know why they, we need these laws. Why do you need these laws? We're all just. It's foolish, guys. It's foolish. And so you tell them, you say, look, the law, anytime you get somebody bragging, anytime someone's throwing you out, talking about some, well, uh, you're caught in the very act. You just say, look, the law is not made for a righteous man. There's none righteous, no, not one, but God. I've been born again, new creature created in him, found in him, having not my own righteousness. He is my righteousness. He is my justification. He is my glory. He's my temple. He's my refuge, right? It was made for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Be found in him, having not your own righteousness. According to the glorious what? Gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. So we're using that law lawfully as a schoolmaster to show men that they're not just and that they gotta be saved by grace through faith. That's why we're giving them the gospel, guys. And it's very, very clear, very clear. So I just wanted to give you that because I think that's really important. And uh, these people claim, oh no, bro, I don't believe we're saved by keeping the law, but you can't tell me you can go on sinning. 
well, my new man is hidden God and God can't sin. So you can get them at every turn where they, these guys, they try to be so sneaky. I'm not saying you got to keep the law, but if you keep on sinning, well, my new man who's hidden God can't sin because God can't sin and my new man is hidden God. Now, can you see my flesh? Yes, you can see me, right? See, see my flesh? Well, if my life is hidden God, is my flesh my new life? No, because you can see it, right? It wouldn't be hid if you could see it. And the children of the flesh aren't children of God. So when you go to the temple made with hands and they want the works of your hands, it's because they're making profit out of you guys. And they're not going to tell you the truth because they want to see your works. And to them, the proof of your salvation is in the works of your hands. And that's why they dwell in the temple made with hands, which God says he doesn't even dwell in. Neither does he worship with men's hands. Right? They that are in the flesh cannot please God. So all the works of the flesh are as filthy rags. All the works of the flesh are as a filthy whore and a harlot. And so the sooner you understand that, that your flesh is an abomination that is desolate of any righteousness, you can see yourself for who you are. And then you can get out of the way, not resist, not stand in your own way. And then you realize you need to stand in the holy place, meaning be born again, a new man, a new creature in Christ. He that is able to keep you from what? Falling. So you see that abomination of desolation that he that readeth understand. Okay? Praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.